ever since we started pulling texts from the one-year Bible and not just going by the lectionary, you hear stuff you don't usually hear in church, right? Mm -hmm. Here you have King David. If you ever thought you were having a bad day, <laughs> King David is having to flee from Jerusalem because his son Absalom has taken over. Uh, and so Jesus, uh, David and his soldiers and those few people who are still loyal to him are basically fleeing for their lives to try and avoid this great big conflict in Jerusalem. And so while he's exiting, <coughs> this guy called Shimei, aren't you glad that Cindy was the left? Yeah. <laughs> and Mephibosheth, you should, tr Seth, you should try saying that three times fast. Mm -hmm. That was the guy who came with the wineskins and all the things. There's so much going on in this passage. So let me just give you a little background so you know where we are. Absalom, the reason he's being terrible, this king's son, is because he had a sister that he loved beyond measure. Her name was Tamar. And you've probably heard this story. Um, Anon, another son of King David, really thought he had a beautiful sister. He was pining away. He wanted to have sex with his sister. And of course, that was not possible. So a cousin of his comes up with this great plan for how he can pretend he's sick, have King David send his sister to his room to specially prepare food for him and uh, feed him by her, and he rapes her. And uh, then, of course, this was the great custom they had then. If you were raped by someone, they could make it right by marrying you. Uh, but he says no, no, and he throws her out. So she tears her clothes, she sobs. This is uh, Absalom's beloved sister. You know she's beloved because he says, don't worry, come into my house. Um, and so he takes her into his household to care for her, and his first daughter he names Tamar. Uh, and so, but King David, while it says he's angry at what happened to Tamar, you know what he does? Zero. Zero. Absalom waits two years. He bides his time. And then he arranges long plan to have his, all his brothers come to some festivities. And he makes sure that Anon is killed. And that's the end of him. David is furious, Absalom has to flee, uh, stuff happens, stuff happens, and he comes back, and his father's forgiven him, but they're not exactly on a loving footing. And Absalom, who's really had it with his dad by then, is kind of cagey, and for, he waits four years before he starts this takeover, but he keeps posting himself outside the city gates of Jerusalem, and when people come, because David would try cases and make decisions, when they come and bring their problems to the king, of course, it would take forever to be heard. Absalom, very good looking man, happens to be posed just by the gate. He's so friendly. He says, oh, if only I were the judge, I would see that you got justice. This is such a good case. So you can imagine how people start to feel about Absalom. Boy, if only that guy was in charge, things would be good for me. Mm -hmm. um, and that goes on and on and on until Absalom plans this takeover. So the takeovers just happened. King David is fleeing, and you have this Shimei guy who's out there throwing dirt clods at King David and his soldiers. He's not alone. Um, but he's throwing rocks and dirt clods that are raining down on the soldiers and the king. Imagine the abject humiliation. Uh, and what does King David do? One of his soldiers says, you don't have to put up with this dead dog. Let me go. I'm cutting his head off. And uh, that would have been easy to achieve. But David says no. David sees in in this horrible, horrible meanness, throwing of dirt, the things that Shimei is saying are not true. He's not telling true things about David, but he's really mad, 
and uh, he's just on the bandwagon of, okay, out with the old king, and so he's attacking David. And what David chooses to do is preserve <coughs> his life. He says, no, this may be part of God's plan for me, and it may be that when God sees how distressed I am, God will want to change my fortunes. And he accepts the terrible time he's having. He accepts how mean someone is being to him. He accepts all that. And instead of judging his feelings of himself and his own worth on what people around him are saying, and David had lots of faults. We know that about him. But he chooses, and this is why no wonder God loved him, when he's having like the worst time ever, and on top of that, here's this weakling pelting him with dirt, and he chooses not to engage in retribution. He says, no, he will not die because of me. And he puts up with it till he gets all the way to the Jordan River. Meanwhile, this guy doesn't give up. He's following him the whole way, dirt clods, <laughs> dirt clods, dirt clods. And David is taking it and taking it and taking it until he gets to the Jordan River, where we're told he refreshes himself. Psalm 127 says, in vain, Good for those of us who work like lunatics sometimes to remember. In vain you get up early and stay up late. God gives sleep to God's beloved. David, in the worst crisis, one of the worst crises, he knew how to find crises, that guy, but one of his worst crises, he comes to times of refreshing in the middle of the nightmare because he learns to rest easy in the love of God, even when it's uncomfortable, even when people are not being very nice, not being very fair, even when his own family is attacking him. King David chooses to turn his whole life towards God, and he's willing to wait until God brings the situation around to what is right again. He's willing to endure what he needs to endure to wait for God's justice. He thinks maybe that this criticism, and there have been times in his life where he's heard criticism and changed what he was doing. When he had the affair with Bathsheba and the prophet Nathan was able to get to him with a story that helped him see how wrong he was being. David was somebody who could accept criticism, think about it, and wait and try and keep his life moving in the direction God intended. There's an old Yiddish proverb that says, if one person calls you an ass, ignore it. If two people call you an ass, get a set. <laughs> David learned to experience criticism so that he could see if some of it really applied. And if it didn't, he didn't let it ruin or change what he was doing. He managed to steer a course that kept his eyeballs and his choices on God. The situation with Absalom did not have a happy end. It just gets worse and worse. And we can see how David's choices along the way really set some of this up. Some of us live with family situations that break our hearts. Sometimes there was something we could do. Sometimes not one blessed thing we know because we tried everything. And yet, again and again and again, God invites us, not just in our good, happy times, but in those times 
when the dirt clods are flying, God invites us to turn and return to the one who loves us, to the one who will help us sleep at night. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.